Get access to exclusive tutorials and take your paracord weaving to the next level by supporting this channel on Patreon. Link in the video and description below. Hey what's going on guys, Tim here again. In today's video we're learning how to make a stitched Turks head knot beglary. So beglary, very simply put, is a super simple skill toy that's a lot of fun that you can carry around with you anywhere you go. And uh, yeah, if you're a fan of my channel, you've seen some beglary reviews here and there. But today we're learning how to make a Turks head knot beglary. So I hope you guys will like this one. Remember, if you're looking for where to get paracord, you can check out those affiliate links down below. And that being said, let's get into the tutorial. So to start out, I've got my piece of paracord here. I'm using a fid. You don't have to, but it'll make it a little bit easier. And um, to start out, we're just going to simply tie a two pass uh, Turks head knot. Or I think it's just a Turks head knot. You're going to start that by starting on one end of the paracord and I'm going to wrap it around my two fingers going away from me. I'm going to make an X and cross it over like so. And that's kind of like the second wrap and bring it back around to the front. And notice I do kind of cross over the bottom right part of that cord. Now working with the fit end, I'm going to go under that section right there on the right and bring it out the top. Right, so bring the cord all the way through. Now, rotating my hand towards me, I'm gonna cross over those two cords on the back. And you're going to push the one on the right underneath the one on the left. Just make a bit of an opening like so. Then take that fit and go underneath the cord uh, from this perspective on your left side and bring it all the way through. And then now with those two cords on the bottom, you're gonna go underneath the cord on the right and out that opening like so. Okay, so pull that all the way through. And now you're back at the front. And from here, it's very easy. All you're going to do is follow that uh, sort of loose cord there. So the cord that we started out on, you're just gonna follow it and go right next to it. So it's kind of like this uh, makes the second pass of what we just did. So again, following that same cord, go underneath, bring that out and through, and then go underneath this opening here and out the top. So again, you're just following that same cord that you tied with. And at this point, you can kind of loosen it up and rotate it on your fingers if you want. But you're just gonna do this all the way through the knot, all the way to the other side. And um, keep doing that until you've done You've got your two passes running all the way around. Now, when you get to the very end here, you're going to go under this one last part. See how we're meeting the part where we started? Go under the last section and have it coming out the middle like so. All right, and you're gonna stop there because now if you look all the way around, we've done two passes everywhere. So that is the first part. Then from there, you're going to just start cinching the entire thing uh, closed and get it a lot smaller. You're not gonna cinch it all the way till it's you know completely shut, but you definitely wanna make it a lot smaller. So start by working the excess of the Turks head knot through the rest of the knot. I just kind of arbitrarily start um, you know working that slack out anywhere. And ideally you wanna work that slack all the way out to the end that has the majority of the cord. So remember, you're not getting it all the way closed. Um, you're just getting this Turk's head knot a lot smaller, right? So get that all the way out to the other side. So now that we have our Turk's head knot slightly closed, we're gonna insert the ball bearing. You can use a marble if you don't um, have ball bearings. And now we're going to close it pretty much up all the way. Now I didn't pull that tail end um, and hide it underneath just yet. I can, I'm gonna do this as a two-step process, but 
if you want to, you know, not tighten it twice, you can pull that end um, further and hide it. You'll see what I mean in the next step. But again, pull that excess all the way through and get the uh, Turks head knot wrapped around the ball bearing uh, pretty much uh, as tightly as possible. You don't want to go too crazy tight, but uh, see now what I'm going to do in this third step here. I'm going to push that melted end just under so it's hidden because I don't want that tail end showing. And now that it's hidden right next to that ball bearing, I can further again for the third time uh, move that uh, excess paracord through the Turks head knot. So again, just work that slack all the way through because we're going to hide that um, little melted end there. Also, to make it a little bit easier on your fingers, uh, if you have a knotter's tool or a fid, you can use that instead to pull up on the excess cords because uh, it can get a little, you know, tiresome on your fingertips. So feel free to use uh, your knotter's tool or your fid to make the process a lot easier. So now that that first side is done, we're going to tie the second uh, Turk's head knot. But what you'll notice is I'm actually going to have to lead with the end that I've already tied the uh, ball bearing into. Now, I know it's a little weird, but you kind of have to do it this way. Otherwise, um, it won't work as a beglary because the, the joiner cord will be coming out the side of the Turk's head and not the middle. So again, I'm going to do the exact same thing as before. I wrapped you know the cord around my fingers the first step. And you're just going to, again, follow the same process of tying that uh, very same Turk's head knot, but this time you're using that end with the ball bearing as your lead. And it can get a little uh, tough, but you know what? By doing this um, on your fingers, you have a lot of freedom because it's a lot bigger than it needs to be. And you can just, you have that, you know, slack to work the ball bearing through. So tie the exact same Turk's head knot uh, with the ball bearing and yeah, just do the same process until it is uh, done. And again, after those initial passes, you're going to do the same thing, follow the uh, same lead cord around a second time to create that second pass. So again, you'll just have to, you know, open up those knots wherever you need them to get the uh, ball bearing through. So just, um, yeah, do that again, simple process and uh, do that all the way through to the other side. So now after you've tied that second Turk's head knot and you've started to cinch it a little bit closer, uh, closed and a lot more small, you're going to have to determine your mid cord length now. So um, for this uh, bag Larry, I like to, for myself, I like to do six and a half inches uh, mid cord length. That's the long game I like to play. Uh, it could vary for you, but for most people, it'll be around between six to six and a half inches. And I'm actually going to make that uh, mid cord six and a quarter inch because on the other side when I finish the Turks head knot I'm going to have to pull the uh, melted end and hide it again like I did on the first time but that small bit of uh, cord that I have to, have to pull through to hide the melted end will increase the mid cord length so I know it's a it's kind of a little over the top but you know I like to be very specific with my mid cord length so I'm going to make that mid cord six and a quarter inches and right now I'm just again pulling all the excess cord through to the other side and slowly cinching up the second Turks head knot. And that being done now, I'm going to start closing up um, the second knot after putting in the ball bearing again. So again, I'm just going to start pulling the excess through and you make sure you want to pull all that excess cord 
out through to the long end or the, I guess you can call it the waist end. Of course, you don't want to pull the excess cord to the middle because you want to keep that middle cord, the joiner cord, um, that specific length. So again, I'm going to just tighten everything up and get that uh, Turk's head knot as uh, cinched up as possible. So now that the second knot is done, I'm going to snip the excess cord off and I'm going to stop just a little bit shy of a quarter of an inch. I don't want to melt too close to my Turk's head knot. So um, I apologize for not showing this the first time, but what I'm doing here is I'm just going to melt the cord slightly and I'm actually going to pinch them down with my needle nose pliers because that way it'll be a bit easier to hide the, um, the sort of uh, melted end underneath that Turk's head knot. So see again, see I'm pulling on that little cord there and I'm going to just hide it underneath the Turk's head knot. Don't pull too hard because if you do, you might yank it out and you're gonna have to start all over again. But um, yeah, just get that cord underneath there very carefully. All right, and then now um, I'm gonna use my knotter's tool just to get that through. And once you've got it, it's kind of uh, discreetly hidden under that Turk's head knot. Again, you're going to work that excess back towards the other side, and in this case, you're going towards the joiner side. So, see how this little bit of cord is going to add to that middle length? That's what. Um, that's why I wanted to leave it just a little bit shorter, about a quarter inch. So, work that excess all the way through, and um, once it comes out to the other side where the mid cord is, uh, we can move on to the next step. So now we're going to do the stitching. This part is completely optional, but I've got my micro cord on a uh, type 1 fid and I'm going to start where my joiner cord is as you can see and all I'm going to do uh, the process does look a little complicated but I'm going to keep it to the left of that cord and you're just going to follow the edge of that cord um, that's really the whole process of this stitching this Turk's head so as you can see I'm going underneath two cords and see I'm keeping it on the left there and if you do this and you keep um, following that same edge, you'll eventually make your way to the middle where the two cords touch each other. So that's kind of the second pass. And then you continue stitching and um, eventually you'll end up on the third side, which is on the very right. Um, it's a little hard to describe, but if you just follow along that edge of the cord, you'll see what I mean. So all I'm doing is following that edge of the cord. I'm going underneath these cords two at a time. And you're just going to pull all your, all your micro cord through and make sure that micro cord stays on, um, you know, the current side you're working on. And what's going to happen again is once you've covered the entire, I'm going to, you know, air quote left side of edge of those cords, it'll make its way to the middle. It does it very naturally. You'll notice when you, at some point when you've done uh, the entire stitching on the left side, there's nowhere really to go except for the middle. So uh, um, this part is a little bit tedious, but I think it does make the Turk's Head Big Larry look a lot cooler and a lot more, you know, nice to look at. So again, it's uh, optional, but I like to add this stitching here to make it look, you know, nicer. And if you just follow what I'm doing here and follow the exact same process, you'll get the, you know, hopefully similar results. And one thing you will notice is the, the knot does tend to get a bit tougher to stitch as you go because you're kind of adding I guess a bit of tension to those cords by um, adding a, the micro cord in there. So um, just do be careful when you're pressing on that fid, especially if you're using your palm. You don't want to you know, cut yourself or anything. So yeah, just continue stitching. Um, it is very intuitive as, as long as you, you know, follow the same path as that first cord. And just do this all the way through to the other side.
All right, and now finishing up the final part, as you can see, I've stitched all three edges and I'm coming out the middle now. So that's kind of, you'll know when you're done. So pull that cord through and um, yeah, just get everything, make sure it's nice and tight and make sure all the cords are sitting where they're supposed to sit. And all I'm gonna do now is clip off the excess micro cord. So uh, don't clip it too close. Again, just maybe an eighth of, a, an, eighth of an inch out and then what I'm going to do now is I don't want that little melted end sticking out. So I'm going to melt it with my lighter. And then again, with the same fit or your knotter's tool, whichever you're using, um, just kind of tuck it underneath the um, where the Turk's head is. It's um, going to be a little bit tough because I'm sure after all that stitching and knotting, it'll be very tight. But again, just carefully uh, press in on that melted end and just tuck it underneath. Okay, so get that nice and hidden on the inside and that way it's not really blocking the ball bearing. And that is the um, process, all right? So we've done one side and now you're just gonna do the other side. So we're gonna do the exact same process. I'm not gonna you know, go through this exactly again, but yeah, just do the exact same stitching process all the way to the other side. And again, you know, snip and melt the cords as you would. All right, and there we have it. We are finished. There is the Turk's head Beglary, and here is uh, how I like to gauge the mid cord length. Uh, just outstretch your fingers and do um, stretch the Beglary across your fingers, and that is usually the average for most long game players. If you want to do short game, you want to do the length of your palm, like so. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and if you're not aware, I do run a Patreon page to support this channel. Uh, you guys want access to exclusive tutorials, feel free to check out the link to that in the video as well as description down below. Also, I do have uh, some merch running now on Teespring if you want some official Weavers of Eternity merchandise, t-shirts and stuff like that, and mugs and whatnot, feel free to check that out as well. Link is in the video. Guys, thank you so much for watching. See you on the next one.